Okay, in this video, I want to show how to determine the third number on these uh, dial combination locks. Now, the third number exploits a poor security feature of these locks. So if you were to, if, if this inner disk, this is the disk that corresponds to the third number in the combination, the last number, if it were perfectly smooth except for this one cutout, then you'd be able to pull up and you'd be able to feel the cutout and you'd just know right away the correct number. So Master tried to prevent this by adding false gates, which you can see right here. And you can get into those grooves of those false gates. Let me show you from this angle. Well, it's hard to show, but um, you can get into the grooves of those false gates and it'll almost feel like you're in the correct spot. And so, mass, so there's 12 bumps on this lock, right, or grooves. There's the correct one, and then there's 11 false ones. The problem is, is Master did not make them all the same width. So this one, the correct one, is actually wider and ever so slightly more to the right, um, which means you know, to a higher number than all the false ones. All the false ones are the same width, and they're all slightly narrower and slightly more to the left than the correct one. So let me actually show how that works in practice on the dial. So what you do is you're just gonna you're gonna start at zero. So we go around and we pull up and we get ourselves into a false gate around zero. And so this one goes from about 9.1 to around 0 0.1, something like that. Okay, then we add 10. And okay, this is 10 is already, we already know 10 is the correct number because it goes, it goes from like 9.5 to 10.5, which is wider and uh, wider and more to the right. But I'm just gonna show 20 here. And again, we go from 9.1 to 20.1, and you can compare that. So we're going past it. So 10 is the correct number. We can just look, and indeed 10 is the last number. So let me show on a different one. I don't want it to be that easy. Okay, so we'll go around to zero here. We'll get into the first false gate, which goes from zero to one on this lock. Zero to eh, maybe 0.9. Okay, then we add 10. This one goes from zero to 0.9. Add 10, zero to maybe one, pretty close though. And then zero to one. Okay, so it wasn't any of those. So now we're gonna compare the next set of false gates. Okay, so we'll go to uh, after the zero but before the five somewhere. Okay, there we go. So this one goes from 3.1 to 4.1. Okay, and then this one goes from 3.5 to 4.5. It's wider and more to the right. So we know for sure that the last number here is 14. And we can just, so if you're not sure, we can go to the next one and you go back, you know, we're back to 3.1 to 4.1 or so. And you, you can see that this is just wider and more to the right. Um, so you, this is actually quite easy to do. It, the difference is about 0.5 whenever you find the right number. It'll go more to the right by about 0.5. And so I'll just, let's just pretend we didn't find it. So then we would go to the next set of four gates. So this one goes from uh, 6.8 to 7.5 or so, 6.5 to 7.5, something like that. And then 6.5 to 7.5, and then 6.5 to 7.5, and then 6.5 to 7.5 or so. So all of those seem the same. So we've now just checked all 12 of the gates, but the only one that was clearly wider was the one where we went from 3.1 to 4.1, but then over here, when we go from 13.1 to 14.1, we actually end up going from 13.5 to 14.5, and so we know that uh, we know that the correct number is 14. So that is how you determine the last number on these locks. And so you might be wondering why do we why do we add 10 and all of that? And the the reason is um, more practical than anything else. Um, you could just check this gate, then this gate, then this gate, then this gate, you know, and so on all the way around and just find whichever the one the widest one is. Um, but that can be hard because here we go. So here, that's, here, this is why that's hard. So here's the first gate that we're gonna check. 
but then the second gate's right here, right? And so we're not looking at the same numbers on the dial, so you can't, it's hard to compare 9.5 to point, you know, point 0.1 to, uh, you know, 3.9 to 3, or excuse me, what, 2.9 to 3.5 or so. That's just, they're hard to compare. Like, was one wider, was one wider, or was it more right, uh, most, most? And so we just exploit the fact that sort of these numbers are, you know, they go, they're modulo 10, you know, they sort of go around in, by 10s. So we check the first one, and then we check the, the next one that's offset by 10, and the next one's offset by 10, next one's offset by 10. And so we, we check, we check um, uh, four, four values three different times to check all 12. And that'll eventually, that'll eventually find whichever gate was the wider one. And so I'll show you on one of these smaller locks. And I don't, I have not looked at the back of this, so I don't know what the third number is, but we're gonna go around to zero. And these, these smaller locks have just have a much more subtle feel to them. So this one goes from about 0.5 to about 0.7. 0.5 to maybe 0.5, okay, at 10, okay, okay, we have to really pull up and get into the groove on these little things, so this one goes from like maybe 0.1 to 0.1, okay, and this one goes from 0.1 to 0.5 or so, well, you know what, on these small locks, it can actually be hard to pull up on the shackle reliably, and it hurts your finger. So what I do in that case is I get myself a carabiner, and I lock the carabiner in, and then I can hold the carabiner, and I can squeeze and pull up much easier. So that just gives me a better grip on the lock. So I'm going to go back around here. Now, I'm really let me get solidly into the first groove. Okay, there's the first groove. 0.5 to 1.5. Okay. 0.5 to 1.5 or so, 0 0.5, 1.5, 0 0.5, 1.5, okay, so it wasn't any of those, because there was no anomaly there. So let's find the next set of grooves. Okay, this one goes from 3.9 to 4.9, 3.9, 4.9, 3 3.9, 4.9, 3.9, 4.9, okay, it wasn't any of those. So find the next groove, which is after five. Okay, so this one goes from seven to eight. 7.1 to 8.1, something like seven to eight. Okay, and then that one goes from seven to eight. Seven to eight. Alrighty, this one's different. So this one goes from seven to nearly nine. It goes to like seven point or eight point five. So we know that the correct number here is thirty-eight. So the last number on this one is thirty-eight, and I'm able to do that. I'm able to pull it more reliably by gripping onto this carabiner and pushing better. So we know pretty much for certain that the last number, and it just happened to be the very last one to, for us to try. Um, the, the we're on the we're on the third number false gate now, or excuse me, the, the correct gate. We're, we passed all the false gates. And this is the one that's that's wider and more to the right, so a larger number. And uh, so in this case, 38 is going to be the last number, and we can just check 38. Okay? And that is how you determine the last number on these locks.